Hey guys, it's Rosina and welcome back to the channel. Now, as you can see, we are in my kitchen, but today we're not doing a baking or cooking video today. Today, I'm gonna show you all of my kitchen essentials that I use that I think are worth having. I'm not saying, yes, go out and buy these, spend all your money to buy all the things that I have that are super expensive and you could, I can totally afford. No, see, today it's just gonna be things that I use in my kitchen that I find essential to have and that really help me in the kitchen, really. Now, since we're, you know, up close and personal here, I thought it would be easy to show uh, my first couple of essentials, which is my pots, pans, and I guess we could call it stoneware that I have. Now, when it comes to pots and pans, you only need a certain amount. You don't need like one of everything. You don't need that 10 piece set that you can get at like any store or anything. You don't need that. You don't need the 10 piece set. You only need like maybe about like four things, but it lasts. Like this will last you like years. If you take good care of it make sure to take care of it and I recommend do not put them in the dishwasher hand wash them it'll make them last longer but I have the brand all clad now yes that is an expensive brand like I said you don't need to get all clad you can get any brand of stainless steel that you feel is within your budget and you can afford if you have a special occasion coming up let's say like you know your wedding I got a lot of these all clads from my wedding registry I put it as a wedding gift and if people could get it, cool. If not, that's okay. I did get them as wedding gifts. Now, I think it's probably best to do it that way so you don't have to you know, spend money that you don't have. I will show you the four all clad things I have that are essential for a kitchen. The way to make sure of that is you get a little bit of water and you just kind of salt bay it up onto it and spray a little water onto it. And if it starts making um, like little, uh, what were they called? Like droplets or, you know, little beads of water. There we go, beads of water. That's when you know it's ready. So wait until it beads up. Then you know your pan is hot enough to start cooking and things will not stick. We have here, this is a stainless steel uh, skillet. Now we have here, this is a 10 inch skillet. Now, a skillet, perfect for, you know, frying any of your stuff, things like that. So you can get a 10 inch, you can get a 12 inch, you can get any size, but I thought 10 inch is perfect when it's just me and Kyle. But when, you know, the family grows, you know, in the future, you know, maybe we'll have kids someday. Um, 10 inch is still good. If, if it's just gonna be like maybe three of you, perfect. If you're hosting for, other people, I would suggest a different pan. What is that different pan? Let me grab it. Now let's say you are having guests over. It's like more than the two of you. So what I use when it's more people is I use this saute pan. Now, as you can see, it has, it's deeper. So it's better to do that and it's bigger in size. I think this is about a 12 inch, but I use this when I'm having guests over or doing a more saucier dish, dish. I use this when I'm using something like, you know, doing a sauce dish. Like it has, you know, a bunch of stuff. Like I do my uh, Thai green curry in it, or I do like my um, bacon shrimp pasta in it, you know, stuff like that. So if you're doing like a pasta dish or something, a saute pan is perfect for that. It's deep enough that it keeps all the liquids in there and you don't get a lot of uh, spillage. Next on our stainless steel uh, pieces that we have, I have here a soup pot. Now this is perfect enough to make my potatoes in, or you know, I wouldn't do much soups in this. I have a different pot for that, but I mostly do my potatoes in this because you know it's easy enough to do, and you know just more of that kind of stuff. So soup pot I think is good to have and you only need one you don't need much if you want like a stock pot, pot or something get a stock pot especially if you're going to make like bone broth and stuff like that and I do have one I just don't use it as much so that's why I wouldn't call it an essential for myself but I do have one I just don't use it a lot now the last thing I have that is stainless steel that I think everybody should have is a saucepan. Now, obviously for saucepans, you make 
you know, gravies. You can do, I, sometimes I boil my noodles in this at times, but it's nice to have a saucepan when you're making gravies and stuff. So that's all you really need. And I like to have all of mine, like as you could see from the other ones, I like to have the lids included because you know, when you're cooking something like, let's say in the saute pan, I'm making shrimp scampi. Well, the way I do it is I want it to be covered so then the shrimp can cook all in unison. So it can all cook together and make sure that it's all fully cooked. Now there is one dish that I think really, if you can afford it, you should get yourself one. Now this pot is expensive depending on where you get it. And someday I would love to get the Le Crusette one, but the one I have is great. And please don't judge it, it is very dirty, but that is because I use it a lot. And there are some parts that are stuck on it that I need to use barkeepers on, but that'll be for a different time. So please don't judge how dirty it is. And that dish is, oh, it's so heavy. I have a six quart Dutch oven. Now, my dad would always tell me that a Dutch oven is essential. He said, that's all you really need. You can do, you can cook whatever you want in a Dutch oven and it works. You can put this in the oven, you can put it on the stove top, it works. And I do a lot of stuff with this Dutch oven. Like you can see how dirty it is. It has a bunch of cooked on grease and everything. And yes, I know I have to clean it. It's hard, it, when it's caked on, I didn't have anything to clean it yet, but now I do with the barkeepers. But I cook so many things. I cook a pot roast in this. And let me tell you, if you have this Dutch oven and you put it in the oven for three hours and slow cook it at like 300, you will have meat that will pull apart so nicely and it's so good. So you can do that. I do my dad's spaghetti in it, which I will do a video on that. You will see me cook my dad's spaghetti. Check out for that video some other time. <laughs> That's like when I say, like sauce like that. With my soup pot that I showed you, the all clad one, I wouldn't necessarily do a tomato based soup in that because with stainless steel, metal can make the soup get all weird. I don't remember exactly what it is, but when it's something acidic, I would not recommend doing it in a stainless steel. If you do something acidic, get a Dutch oven or I know I don't really care for a nonstick, but get a nonstick pot if you're going to do an acidic base like tomatoes. Don't do stainless steel. Do something like a ceramic or uh, what do they call it? Um, I can't remember what this material is, but just don't do stainless steel when you're doing tomatoes. All right, now stoneware. I will say you're gonna take a look at it. When I mention the brand name, you're gonna be like, how did you afford that? Let me tell you. Now, I have this dish that I use a lot and you don't need it, but I use it a lot and I'm glad I have it. It's nice to cook big, bigger dishes like roasting some vegetables or I normally use it to make my bruschetta or bruschetta shrimp. This is a Le Crusette, I believe a casserole dish. I think that's what they call this one, but Yes, Le Crusette. It is expensive. It is a highly luxurious brand. And I could tell you the story where I got this. Now, <laughs> I'll tell you actually the funny story that I had to explain to my dad where I got this. Now, I had him and my mom over and I was cooking the bruschetta shrimp. And I was showing my dad how to make it and he sees this dish and he's like, where did you get that? I said, what do you mean? And he's like, that is a Le Crusette. Where did you buy, why did you buy that? And I had to tell him, dad, Kyle's work that he used to work at, uh, they were just gonna throw it away. And he's like, who would throw away a Le Crusette? And I said, I don't know, maybe because it has like these little like burnt marks on it, like whatever greasy thing got on this. And he's like, and <laughs> so <laughs> he thought I bought this, which he was not too happy about because these are expensive. And 
really at the time I really couldn't afford it but it's a great dish to have though so if you're able to afford a Le Creuset or like I showed you uh, all clad it will last you a lifetime so really if I'd say I would consider buying something not really exactly luxurious, but if I know it's going to last and I see great reviews on it, I am going to buy it. Now I will say this is not exactly a necessity, but when it comes to other stoneware, I love to have these little uh, coquettes. And this is Le Creuset, and this one actually wasn't that expensive. I got this actually on sale. And let me tell you, if you can find a Le Creuset Dutch oven on sale, get it. That's what my dad would tell me. If you see it on sale, it is worth it. So I will give you one bit of advice. If Le Creuset is on sale or any of the luxury brands are on sale, buy it, snatch it up. That's all I will say about that. But so a coquette's nice to have because I keep seeing, the reason why I have one is because I kept seeing those, uh, TikToks and reels about people roasting their garlic in this and making roasted garlic to make it like spreadable and stuff. But I also got it because it's nice to have to put, you know, French onion soup in. It's perfect for a nice little cup of French onion soup. And I mean, that's mostly what I use this for. I haven't used it on the roasted garlic just yet, but I will. But I have this one and I love the color. I'm so sad that they discontinued this one. I should have gotten more. But I had this one. And then I got super lucky with this one. This was the last one they had at Sur La Table. And it's a pumpkin one. See, it looks like a pumpkin. So this one's also perfect for like a nice size for French onion soup. So that is my stoneware. All right, now we're on to bakeware. Now, technically, the Le Creuset casserole dish I showed you could be considered also part of the bakeware. I put it with stoneware because it's kind of different in a way. You only need a couple of things, and I only use a couple of things when it comes to baking too. Obviously, you got your mixing bowls and your measuring cups and stuff like that, obviously. I don't need to show you that. You've seen it so many times when I was baking in my baking videos. Other things that I use, a lot in the kitchen when it comes to baking is. Now you only need a couple of things. Obviously you got your cake tins. I like to have at least two. Two is good to have because, you know, then if you're doing like a multi-tier cake, you don't have to wait so long to sit and clean it and all that kind of stuff. So I recommend probably getting about like two of these. You don't have to get like really expensive stuff. You want something that's like, you know, good quality, but not like super cheap that you have to keep replacing them. Like these are actually kind of stuff that you can replace and it's totally fine. It's not going to be breaking the bank here. Now this one I wouldn't exactly really call an essential but it's nice to also have when you're making cakes but mostly when it's you're making like something like a cheesecake and it's one of those like spring um, release. I think that's what it's called. Spring form, spring release. I'm not exactly sure. I don't remember. I'll put the name somewhere on here. It's nice to have something like this where you can you know, unattach it and then you can make it easy to uh, get your cake out that way. So having a nice spring release one is great. So I would recommend getting this and I'm going to be making so many cheesecakes with this because my husband actually really loves cheesecake. I'll have to make him a lemon one because lemon is his favorite. He loves lemon desserts. So I have to start making more of those. You'll also want something like a square pan. Now you always should have an eight by eight. I say this because when it comes to like making brownies, making like any square like dessert like lemon squares or something like that it's good to have an 8x8 because I think an 8x8 makes it thicker but it makes it not so thin when you make it because I made that mistake once when I made brownies they were so thin that they burned easily so I would recommend getting an 8x8 and this is also an all clad but my mom got me this for uh my wedding gift as well because she heard that I needed an 8x8 and she's like, well, you asked for an eight by eight and she got me all clad because like I said before my other stuff, all clad lasts. So if you really want to splurge, do that. But you also don't want just an eight by eight, like a nine by nine is a typical that you would get, especially if you want like a square cake. So I'd say a nine by nine is perfect for probably like for making a cake. Brownie wise, you could still do it. It has those measurements on the box mixes that you get for 
brownies, but I would recommend doing the eight by more for that. But a nine by nine is also nice to have. And most baking dishes that you find is mostly a nine by nine. And then the last like dish that you would use for baking, it's always nice to have a nice glass uh, Pyrex casserole dish as well. I don't normally do this for desserts. I mostly make cheesy potatoes in this. And let me tell you, cheesy potatoes, chef's kiss. But it's nice to have this. And it's nice to have a lid too, if you're gonna be traveling with and stuff. I don't have a lid for mine. My mom does, but I don't. <laughs> When you're transferring this, you wanna put it in something that will keep your stuff warm. So get something like this that has like, kind of, uh, I don't know exactly what material that is. I can't remember, I'll find it and then put it somewhere in this video. Get something like this so it keeps your stuff nice and hot. And then the other baking essentials you'll want in your kitchen that I use in mine is a cookie sheet, nonstick cookie pans. And don't mind this one, it's very dirty. I have another one, but it's in storage somewhere. Make sure to have those two, because obviously if you're baking a lot of cookies like I am, or making, you know, baking fries or something, or roasting veggies like with the Laker set, you can also roast your veggies on this. That'd be something that you would want baking wise. Now, you don't need a lot of these, like I said, it's just essential to what I have in my kitchen. We'll start off with, you know, the more common things that you need, like obviously cutting boards. Now make sure to have like a couple of these though, because you don't want to mix when you're chopping, you don't want to mix your raw meats or any meats in that, you know, in general with your veggies or anything else you're cutting up. Always have extra cutting boards. I'd say another common one is a grater. It's nice to have this when you're, you know, grating your own cheese which is great when you want to make mac and cheese. Don't use the bag stuff. Get fresh cheese and grate it yourself. It'll melt so much better. I'd say another common kitchen tool that you should probably have would be a rolling pin. You can get any rolling pin. It doesn't have to be anything expensive or anything. I just got this literally at the grocery store and I think it's a, it's a KitchenAid. KitchenAid makes great stuff, so get a KitchenAid. Rolling pin I think would be nice to have, especially when you're making cookies or pies or anything like that. A rolling pin's nice to have and I know Julian Solomina doesn't use a rolling pin, but I do. <laughs> Julian, give the rolling pin another chance, please. Your Aries energy just gives me anxiety, even though I'm a Leo and we would be great friends, but you give me anxiety not using a rolling pin. <laughs> Use a rolling pin, Julian. I'd say another common thing that everyone I think should have in their kitchen is a measuring cup like these, like the Pyrex ones. Cause you need ones to measure your liquids. So this is perfect for liquids. I do wish I had the bigger one that does about like, uh, like six cups, I think. I think that's the biggest one. I do wanna get that because I will say it is tiring when you need to do multiple cups of something and you only have this and you have to keep doing more. Like when I do better than bouillon, and mix it in this, it takes forever. So I would recommend getting a big size. You can get this size, but if you do a lot of cups of something, get a bigger one so you don't have to waste your time doing multiple trips. I mean, I guess I have this one, but I usually use this for other stuff like baking things. Like maybe I put my icing in here to store it because it has the lid, but I mostly use this for storing, like if I do like a cheese dip or something. So I don't really exactly use this to measure liquids. I just use this to store into the fridge, so. I guess I was wrong, I do have at least a four cup one, but I don't use this to measure. I just put things in this to put in the fridge. Now another tool I use a lot is a sieve. Now it's nice to have a sieve to make your, like your flour sifted and stuff like that. You can use a sieve, but it's nice to have a flour sifter as well, but I do not have that. So this is the next best thing. And it's nice to, you know, use for, you know, mashed potatoes if you wanna make it smoother. But I have another tool for mashed potatoes that I will show later. But this is nice for that, but it's also nice to, you know, even put your noodles in if you need that. Or what I use it for is to drain the mio pois out of my pot roast so I can make a gravy with the liquid. Now, speaking of mashed potatoes, this is something that I actually learned about from Julian, watching him make potatoes with, and that's a potato ricer. Now, as you can see, this looks like a giant garlic press. I guess I could make this a giant garlic press, but this is a potato ricer. And let me tell you, if you use this, instead of just using a regular, regular old hand mixer, to mix your mashed potatoes to make them nice and smooth. Try this out, try a potato ricer. It will make you the most smoothest mashed potatoes ever. And I recommend 
if you want to do more, make it a little more smooth and stiff. I mostly just use this by itself because I'm lazy and I can't focus enough to make it smoother. So I get it pretty smooth with just using this. So this would be something that is not um, a necessity, but I would recommend getting. So get yourself a potato ricer. Now, our next tool is a splatter screen. A splatter screen is great to have, especially if you're cooking something that likes to splash a lot and especially when you're frying something or you know just basically sauteing and you have things just like oil just splurting out and everything it's great to have a splatter screen to not make as much of a mess and let me tell you before i had this grease everywhere it was chaos <laughs> now this is something nice to have too and that's a trevé Always have one when you have hot dishes, especially if you're going to put it somewhere like on a table for when you're doing a potluck or having guests over. It's nice to have this to make sure the hot thing is not touching your furniture, especially if you don't want like to have like a burn mark or something. It's good to have these to protect that from happening. And then another thing to prevent more messes so you don't have to clean up as much is getting yourself a spoon rest to put your utensils on. Now, I didn't have one for the longest time, and then I got this one because it's cute. It's got a little lemon in it. But it's also to go with my future Italian kitchen that I will have someday. It's gonna be full of lemons and a bunch of neutral colors. I'm gonna have that Tuscan kitchen someday. But it's nice to have something like this, especially to prevent a lot of messes, and so you don't have to keep grabbing a paper towel to rest your utensils on. It's better to have something like this when you're cooking, you just need to put it somewhere, just put it on that. And it can go on top of your stove and be okay. It's not like it's gonna get super hot or anything. Now another nice tool to have if you're making, let's say, uh, tomato soup and stuff, or you need something to blend like uh, potato leek soup, mostly for soups. It's nice to have an immersion blender. Now, I use this a lot to make those kinds of soups. It makes it so much easier and you get it all nice and creamy and stuff like that. So you don't exactly need this, but it's something essential that I have in my kitchen. This is also not a necessity, but I have it because I'm gonna start actually grinding up my own stuff, like my own spices and things, and that's a mortar and pestle. This is nice to have when you wanna have, like grind your own herbs and stuff, which I wanna start doing someday. Another thing that I'm sure not a lot of people have in their kitchens, but I think is essential to have. Now, you can tell this is super old because it's falling apart, but I got this from my dad and it's a thaw plate. And it's from, it's a very old thing because this is Miracle Thaw and I'm sure this isn't around anymore. This has probably been around since the 90s. And you could tell I'm super old because this is old. <laughs> so I'm only, I'm almost 30. That's old, right? According to the younger generation. Anyway, a thaw plate is great to have because if you need something thawed like super quick or like just hopefully like maybe you left your meat in the freezer and you're like, oh crap, you know, you thaw a plate, it'll help thaw it just a little quicker. If you want it faster, I'd probably recommend something else. I'm not gonna, don't quote me on it because I'm not a food person, but a thaw plate's probably the best option if you're in a rush. If you want something to sharpen your knives with, a knife sharpener is great, you know, those electric ones, my dad had one, but I've heard that having a whetstone is actually the best to sharpen your knives with. Now, I just started using this not too long ago and I, th I think I got the hang of it, but let me tell you, if you want your knives sharp, this will have your knives sharp. Never dice or chop anything with a dull knife. Make sure you sharpen your knives because you can get hurt if you have a dull knife. Let me tell you, I learned that lesson. I have cut my fingers so many times because I didn't sharpen my knives. Now make sure to sharpen them. Like I said, you don't need a whetstone. They are expensive, but if you can get one as a gift, that's great. I got this as a wedding gift. But if you don't have this, any old knife sharpener that you get is totally fine. Another tool I like to use that not everybody needs is a salt keeper. Now, I wanted to get the dual so that I could put both salt and pepper in it, but I didn't find it until after I bought this. So I was a little disappointed in that, but it's nice to have this because a salt keeper, like the name says, it keeps your salt good. But also I like to just open it and then just do my little pinch of salt. Then you have your meat cleaver. Now, this is, a meat cleaver is nice to have to tenderize your meat, to 
make a little, I guess it makes a little more flavorful. I don't know, I'm not a chef, but I've heard a meat cleaver is great to tenderize your meat and flatten it too. If you need like say your chicken to be a little more flatter to cook evenly. And Boos wanted to say hello by squeaking his squeaker. He's ready for football again, I guess, just like his dad. <laughs> now our next tool is a zester. I like having a zester, especially if you need to zest like a lime, an orange, a lemon, any citrus fruit or any fruit that needs to be zested for a recipe. But it's nice to have something like this, but also it's nice to have one of those gloves that helps protect your hands because this can still cut you. So just be careful when using these, especially a cheese grater too. If you feel like you easily cut yourself with those things, get one of those gloves that protects yourselves. Like I have like this type of glove. Now this one's only really for the zester. I wouldn't recommend using this for the cheese grater because this is a little thinner, but get something like this to protect your hand when you're using things like this and a cheese grater. Then we have a pastry brush. Now this is nice to have when you're, you know, brushing egg wash on, you know, bread or any other types of recipes that require you to do some egg wash brushing on things like, you know, a pie crust or something like that. I like to use it when I'm brushing oil or butter on my potato skins and that kind of stuff or like getting, greasing up a pan to get it ready to be baking. So a pastry brush is nice to have with that. That way you don't get too messy in your hands, stay, you know, grease free. Then we have a citrus press. This one's fine. I, I use this a lot when I'm zest, uh, not zesting, when I'm squeezing like limes or lemons for a dish, but I would love to have one that my dad has that has like a container that stores it so that I don't have to keep, you know, taking it, putting the fruit in, squeezing, and then continuing to do that. It's better, especially if you wanna measure it, the exact measurement you want, it's nice to have one that has a little bit of storage. So I would rec recommend, so I would recommend one that you can store all the liquid in. This one's fine, but I'd rather have that one. So if you're gonna get a citrus press, get one that has a little storage spout. I will say another essential thing for myself that I need in the kitchen is a step stool. And I'll let you guess why I need that. That's right, because I'm short. Now this tool I like to have is something that I use a lot when I am doing my dad's spaghetti. And that is just this little, little scoop. It's mostly like, you know, one to measure, you know, little tiny cookies if you want it or anything like that. But I use it to make my dad's meatballs. Now my dad had a fun uh, one that he uses to measure his meatballs is it kind of looks like tongs in a way, but it has like this round spot in it. I wish I had it to show you. I might be able to find a picture, but I'm not sure. When it comes to this tool, it's nice to have to make meatballs with because I like my meatballs about, you know, that size. It's not huge, but like it's a perfect amount and you make a lot of meatballs with it. This would be something I like to have as a tool. And this last one I will show you when it comes to tools. I definitely didn't need and it is not an essential, but I think it's a need and essential for myself. And that's the Pokemon cookie cutters that you saw in my last video. And I'm actually gonna use these. I'm gonna be making Pokemon cookies, hopefully with my best friend sometime in the future. We'll see, we'll have to plan that out. Now on to our storage slash containers. Now, I like to have you know one of these. You don't really exactly need them, but it's one of those, um, oil containers that you use to pour, you know, your oil on, you know, let's say, you know, dressings, when you make a dressing out of this, or, you know, to measure to use for cooking. Like I use olive oil a lot when I'm cooking and, you know, maybe make it a salad too if I do it. But I like having this because it's easier and it pours out a little nicer than having it still in the container. Cause I feel like when it's in its original container, it will just pour out way too much. So it's nice to have something like this. You see these four right here. It's a little further away, but I hope you can see it. But we got these guys and I use these four to put in my baking essentials. Like you got flour here, you got sugar here. This one's got brown sugar in it because I do use a lot of brown sugar when I'm making cookies. And then this little guy right here, doesn't have a label on it, but this one holds my cornstarch that I use to make those slurries, to make a thickening agent, or just, you know, if you need cornstarch for uh, something you're making. And then we got these four right here. 
these little blue ones. Now, I have a different color of this too. This one actually, I have blue and then I have a nice white one, but I like using the blue for now because it matches more with what I got. Now, these all hold my noodles. So obviously the tall one goes with the spaghetti, the angel hair, the fettuccine, linguine, all the really long noodles. And then the last three holds all the other ones. Like this one is holding some orchette pasta that I'm gonna be using to make a dish sometime when it's warmer out. And then this one's got my large shells in it, but that's because I have so many large shells. Usually I put it in this small one, but for now I just have uh, smaller shells. <laughs> I got big shells and smaller shells. And then if I had the mini, mini ones, like the soup shells, oh, that'd be perfect. I make that with mac and cheese. But this one only has the medium shells because I only had a small amount left. So I was like, well, I'll put it in this one. But I like to store my noodles more in like these kind of things instead of just keeping them in their boxes because I don't know, I mean, maybe aesthetic wise, I'm not sure, but I like having these to store my noodles in. And then we have here a, what I call a potato bin. Now, not everybody will have something like this. I don't think I've seen this like anywhere else, but my grandma had this and I got this actually from my grandma's. So you could tell this is like super old. I like to store, as the name says, potatoes. Now I put the potatoes in here and then technically you have this drawer down here, but I don't put anything in there because I guess technically you're supposed to put your onions in there, but you never want to put onions and potatoes together. I, I know there was some chemical thing about that. I'm not exactly remembering it, but I know that you're not supposed to have potatoes and onions together because if you have onions down here, it's going to seep up and make your potatoes not good. So I'm not sure what I want to put in here yet. I will figure that out. But for now, it's kind of dirty. I need to clean it anyways, but it's nice to have something like this. So not everybody needs it, but if you can get your hands on one of these, I would recommend it because it's nice to store your potatoes in. And it's just a fun little thing I got that reminds me of my grandma. Now with appliances, we'll start off with the microwave here because every other appliance that I have is on a different thing. A microwave is great to have. If you don't have one attached to your, like above your stove and everything like most houses do, or some apartments also have a microwave, but mine didn't, so I had to get myself a microwave. But even if you didn't need it, another microwave's kind of nice if you wanna like make popcorn, it's nice to have it in a separate room. Obviously with not having a microwave in my apartment, I had to get one because a microwave I think is, is an essential part that you need in your kitchen. So this is an appliance that you definitely will need. All right, now here are the other appliances that I think you should have in your kitchen that I use in mine that I think are essential. Now we'll start at the end and then make our way here. First, and I'll grab it because it's hard to see, we have a food processor. Now a food processor is nice, I mean, you also can use a blender, which, <laughs> but a food processor is nice to have when you're making like smaller batches of something that you need to puree or chop up and everything. Like if you're doing a bunch of garlic, instead of using a garlic press, just throw in your garlics in here and it'll mince it right up. Or how I use it is when I make tortilla soup, I put all my like tomatoes, peppers, onions, uh, garlic, all that kind of stuff, the juices, everything. In here, just crank it up a tiny bit. Perfect puree that you can put into your tortilla soup. Now, we have this right here. This is an air fryer. I know not everybody has an air fryer, or as us 90 kids, anybody remember the Easy Bake Oven? Did, did anybody have an Easy Bake Oven? I had one. I, let me know if you had an Easy Bake Oven, but this is basically the same thing. This is an adult version of the Easy Bake Oven. But this is nice to have when, you know, you don't want to use as much oil and stuff, you use an air fryer. And I got this actually from Kyle's mom for a Christmas gift one year. And let me tell you, I use this a lot. And the next in line, I already kind of mentioned it, but a blender. Now, I like to use this more, I don't really use it a lot for like the hotter stuff that a lot of chefs use to blend their stuff. I use this more to make like, 
smoothies or milkshakes. Or what dad would always make when we were little and during the summer was Italian slushies, which he just make lemonade, like frozen lemonade. So dad would always call it an Italian slushie, but we all know it's just frozen lemonade. I love using this during the summer to make smoothies, milkshakes, and the frozen lemonades and frozen anything. So a blender is a nice appliance to have for your kitchen. Now here's all reliable. You've seen him in many videos, the stand mixer. You don't need to have a stand mixer. You can just use a hand mixer if you have one. It, it's basically the same thing, but it's nice to have when you don't want to sit there and you know, mix with your hand the whole time and your arm gets tired and everything. But if you can get a stand mixer, like these are pretty pricey. I'll say that they're probably about what, over $200. It's an expensive thing to have, but I think it's worth it. If you can afford to get a nice KitchenAid mixer, I would I would get it. And I would I would vouch for it because I use this a lot. You've seen a bunch of the baking videos I do, but I use it for a lot of things. I, I could make bread in this one day. Maybe I'll do a bread video, I'm not sure. This is nice to have for your kitchen. And then the last appliance I will show that I think is nice to have. Now I know there's the brand Crock-Pot. I mean, they're always best known to being a slow cooker and stuff like that. This is not a crock pot, not the brand anyway, but it's a nice slow cooker, but also a griddle. You can take this off and you can griddle. So I, I kind of like this, this is a two in one. I got this from my grandma's and she let me, she said I could have it when, you know, the day unfortunately comes when she passes away. So I could actually have a slow cooker for my apartment and stuff. So, and you know, for the house in the future when we're able to get a house. <laughs> I'm actually using this right now. You can't see that it's plugged in, but you can see, if you can see uh, condensation here, I don't think you can. It's a little bright back there because I have the blinds open. It's a nice day out right now. At least right now, it thunderstormed this morning. <laughs> I use this a lot to cook a lot of dips. And right now what I'm making is I'm making slow cooker chicken taquitos. And that does it for all my kitchen essentials. I hope you enjoyed. Well, don't forget though, another essential you'll need is a nice cute little puppy. Oh, big yawn. But that is everything. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if there's another essential that I missed that I should show or should have shown in this video. Now don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more of me and more of Caboose and I'll see a lot more of my videos. Don't forget to like and comment and I will see you in the next one. Bye!